and other members will show levels of excitement later in the week. The Right Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Does she stand by her government's policy to, quote, create more jobs? If so, can she confirm that over 245,000 jobs have been created in the last two years? The Right Honourable Jacinda Ardern. Mr Speaker, yes, it is this government's policy to see more people in employment. I can also confirm that in the last two years there were 235,000 more people in the workforce and an increase of around 245,000 people in some form of employment. That's right. One hour a week, probably. Speaking, uh, can she confirm that that means there was around 10,000 extra jobs created on average each month? And if so, how many jobs, new jobs over and above that does her government plan to create? Mr Speaker, it is absolutely this government's ambition to increase employment, particularly for people in the regions and particularly for young people. Uh, because over the same two-year period, uh, the same two-year period that that member referenced, there was, for an example, an increase in the unemployment rate in Gisborne up to 8.8 per cent, and the number of NEETs, young people not in employment, education or training over those, that two-year period, increased by 4,000. We can do better than that. Yeah. So, Mr Speaker, can the Prime Minister tell us what kind of jobs the government has in mind to create in Gisborne? Mr Speaker, we've spoken a number of times around the kind of uh, regional growth and employment we hope to see. Uh, a lot of that we hope to see off the back of our investment through the Provincial uh, Growth Fund. That is an initiative of New Zealand First. But I see opportunities, particularly in Gisborne, around issues like wood processing, the forestry industry and others. This is a government who is ambitious for New Zealanders and our regions. So, Mr Speaker, do those, uh, does the type of jobs you want to create resemble those referred to by her Minister for Regional Economic Development, uh, who said it would take 1,250 planters to plant a million trees a day, 100 days' work a year? And does she mean that planting trees on Tuesdays and Fridays at the minimum wage is the kind of quality job she wants to create? Mr Speaker, we will see a range of job opportunities off the back of that regional growth fund. And it's sad to see that after such a short time in opposition, uh, those past government members have become so unambitious for the potential of those young people. So, Mr Speaker, can the Prime Minister uh, address the question? Uh, and that uh, do the jobs proposed by the Minister for Regional Economic Development, that is, People working, planting trees two days a week on the minimum wage count as the kind of ambitious job she has in mind. Speaker, there are full-time job opportunities in the forestry industry, and the member well knows that. <laughs> Mr. Pr uh, to the Prime Minister, so will she direct the Minister for Regional Economic Development to create full-time jobs paying the living wage as... Uh, the public have been led to believe will be the case, or is she happy with the current policy to create part-time jobs on the minimum wage? Uh, Mr Speaker, the Minister for Regional Economic Development does not need to be directed. He has a very clear ambition for job creation. He has a particular focus on rangatahi and young people, particularly in Northland, um, in the Bay of Plenty and in the East Coast. Those are job opportunities like forestry, and I have an expectation that, of course, they will be quality opportunities with long-term prospects. So can, can the Prime Minister tell us what jobs will be available in addition to those uh, already struggling to be filled in the horticulture industry and in hospitality industry uh, in the regions that she has referred to? Oh, look, Mr Speaker, as I've said, in the area like Gisborne, we have an unemployment rate of 8.8 per cent. Yes, in some cases that's about investing uh, in education and training. That's another reason why this government has removed any barriers to access around education and training with its fees-free policy. It's about investing in young people so they're able to take up those jobs, not diminishing their motivation or their ability to do a job. 
Mr. Speaker, given the or given that the uh, no, uh, does the Prime Minister uh, stand by the estimates made for the government policy that a few, there will be a few thousand extra enrolments across New Zealand as a result of the fees freeze tertiary policy, and to what percentage should the unemployment drop in Gisborne as a result of that policy? Mr Speaker, speaking to the question on the expected enrolment for the education sector, there's been an expectation that that will lift as a result of our policy and stem the tide and stem the tide of declining enrolment and in participation, which was happening under the last government. <laughs> question number two, Willow Jean Prime. My question is to the Minister of Finance. 